Hey everyone, how are you doing? So today I'm pretty excited because we'll continue the, the development of my samurai game made with the PV engine and Rust. And I already have uh, this character and this trigate, but I didn't rig the character so I can't apply any animation. And what I want to explore today is how to load a 3D model and an animation for um, a model. So instead of using my assets, I will use um, specific assets from Mixamo. I don't know if you know about this website, but you have a set of characters and a lot of different animation that you can use to prototype your game and explore uh, how to apply animations to your own character if you want. In our case, we use this dummy character uh, with a, a needle fight animation. And I, I find it very, uh, I don't know, very smooth. And uh, I want to see if uh, Baby Engine can handle it uh, the same as we see it now. Um, there is this great resource, the Baby Cheat Book, and you have a ton of information. And when I was trying to understand how I can um, load 3D models and animation, I came across this uh, documentation, 3D models and scenes with Bevy. And apparently, contrary to uh, Unity, you can't use the FBX file, you need to use GLTF. And I, I was quite curious. So Bevy uses the GLTF 2.0 file format for 3D assets. Um, and uh, I wanted to, to learn a bit more about this format. So GLTF is a modern open standard for exchanging 3D assets between different 3D software applications, like game engines and 3D modeling software. And apparently we have two variants. One is uh, the .gltf file, which is human readable, and then you have the binary GLB, uh, which you will load into, into your game. And you will package everything, all the 3D models, or if you have only one, just only one model, and you can also have uh, a level. So that's uh, quite interesting. And let me check. Yeah, we, we have different GLTF subassets. So you have GLTF scenes are what you spawn into your game world. This is typically what you see on the screen in your 3D modeling software. Scenes combine all of, all of the data um, you need all of the data needed for the game engine to create all the needed entities to represent what you want. And conceptually, think of a scene as one unit. So that's what I said, you can have one 3D model or even a world map or game level into your scene. That's quite interesting because uh, in my game with this character, this one will just be at the epicenter at the beginning. Um, a bit like the game Hades, you know, uh, you have a you have a place where you see all the different characters. You can talk with different characters, and as you evolve into the game, uh, you unlock different stuff. Um, but what I want there is a place where you can build your own world, um, and then. I don't exactly know for the moment what would be uh, the story, but you will evolve into different tiny worlds. Uh, you could have a very modern worlds where you fight different mobs and bosses, and also fantasy worlds. Um, and your samurai character will evolve into into this uh, this tiny world. So loading a scene with uh, a level inside in it and different uh, 3d models already prepared make uh, a lot of sense for me i think uh, it would be very easy to have different scenes for different worlds tiny worlds and then each time i enter into this randomly selected world uh, i just load the scene uh, so you have, of course, what you, you already find into the formats, meshes, primitives, materials, textures, samplers, and animations. So animations describe um, animation that interpolate various values, such as transforms or mesh skeletons over time. In BV, these are loaded into as animation clip assets. So that's what we do today, and we have uh, an excellent example to do that. You have animated fox.rs um, and this one contains everything I need to explore to load a 3D model and the animation attached to, to this one. So let's get started. We have a resource there of animations. So it's like a, a struct that is handling everything. Oh, and by the way, maybe I should start uh, 
from there. Um, I already implemented a camera system. I, I will come back to the example, but first you have a move free, uh, free movement camera um, function where we are using the Dolly uh, library uh, which is providing a camera rig. So just like you have an animation and you have rigs for your animation, there you uh, you can uh, just add different animation for your camera and then you update everything and uh, it will be applied. Um, so that's very straightforward. I have, let me show you. I had this plane with the cube and I, I can move around it um, and with the, my different uh, keyboard keys um, I can move and I can also rotate with the mouse um, and as you can see there we request uh, the game engine camera and we also request the camera controller we just created there that is a wrapper around camera rig um, that just a way for me to, to, request, uh, to request it and then you also need the time because you will update at, a, um, at the same time, delta time provided by the game engine. Um, that's very straightforward. You listen the different inputs and based on that, you will update uh, a movement vector that will apply to the camera rig and you will translate uh, this camera rig. And then you also have the camera rotation uh, you have this function, rotate your pitch, that's where you will apply uh, your different um, mouse events to create the rotations. And then at the very end, you create a, a transform that is coming from the update of the camera rig based, um, well, I, I mean, the update will be on a regular time provided by the game engine, so it's it will be smooth, you know, uh, you will get the, the right frame for the animation by the game engine. And then you apply this transform to the real camera coming from the game engine. That's how I implemented that one. Uh, that's what I did. And now we are trying to implement the, the 3D model with the different uh, animation. Um, for our case, we will have only one animation but even so, maybe later I will add more animations, like when uh, I move the character, I want to be able to run, maybe I want to be able to attack, so I will explore um, how to start an animation and stop an animation later. For the moment, we just want one animation looping over time. Um, so we will have this structure that will hold all the different animation clip, a vector of animation clip, so on the hip, we store that, and we need the asset server to load the different asset resources. Um, as you maybe know, just let me to explain why we are using the setup function. You have different schedulers. You have the startup scheduler and the update scheduler. In the update, it's everything that is moving and you need to, uh, to update the animation uh, on a regular basis with the, the delta time. So you will use the update function. It's a, a different life, you, you have a life cycle for your game, the game loop, and you will start by the startup scheduler and then the, the update scheduler in Unity, and I think BV Engine too, you have uh, the fixed update scheduler for all the physics and stuff like that. So um, if, you, if your character is like colliding to uh, other entities, then you need a fixed update uh, to be sure you don't have any uh, physics issues. Um, but anyway, for our case there, we just have two schedulers and we already added the camera movement to the update scheduler. And the setup is like, uh, you just have a setup function where you load everything into your scene. So it's happening at the startup in the startup scheduler. Um, we need the asset server then to, to load the different resources and we will we will want to replace the cube. So for the moment, I will just comment these parts. Oops. Yeah, we are good. Um, then as you can see in the example, we have a way to load the different animations. So we'll have a, a section where we we'll get the different animations and the 3D model. And as we only have one animation, we just want to load one. That will start with the index zero. 
and then that's where we we wonder how to, to load the model right so apparently we need uh, something let's say that we'll call it the character idle and we expect to have this file into the asset folder right so we already add the file but let me explain how to do that so you remember on this website mixamo you can download the character and you will get a fbx file you don't have uh, other formats so you, you will not get a gltf file so with blender you will just import your file an fbx that i already have there in Saya, and i have a fbx now as you can see we add the character and we already have an animation on it what I will do is just select everything. Be sure to, to just select everything, not just by clicking, but by selecting all the character because you want to get all the different uh, information from the character. The animation, the armature, the joints, uh, surface, and so on. So select everything and you go to export and you select GLTF 2.0. And from there, you just export it. As a character is a GLB, you will get the binary file, and that's all. You will get your your GLB file from an FBX. Oh, sorry. So we have character idle dot GLB, and we want the the animation at the first index. But we also have the three D model to load, right? So if we go back to the example, we'll take a look and find the fox because it was a fox example so we'll take exactly this code and we just adapt it to use our character and it's still um, a glb file but this time we want to load the scene because 3d models are uh, in a scene we don't have a level we we just have one 3d model and we also want to replace the cube by our character, so the character would be on uh, the plane instead of the cube. So now that we loaded all the animation and the 3D model, what we want to do is on a regular update, um, just update the animations, right? So we'll use the update scheduler and we will update it uh, just later to add a new function. If you take a look to the example, you have this function where you have the different animations and that's where you have an animation player and you play the different animations. That's what we'd use there. But we just rename the function because I think we could have a better name like set of animations. Um, for the moment, we don't reorganize the code, but it would make sense maybe to separate a bit um, the different parts for the character and the animations that are attached to the character but for the moment let's just be a bit chaotic because well we we are just learning and i'm just sh sharing how to do that um well so we are requesting the resource animations you know this trick that we defined previously that is vector of uh, handlers with animation clip type um so that's what we load and then you will have the different animation players and there we iterate and for each player we play the animation we want in our case uh, it's just the first animation and we repeat it um where is it there we repeat the animation because that's what we want for the moment but later you could have some logic where you based on a on a on a key you hit, uh, you will just update the animation. Like if you're starting the, the movement event, then you will load, you will start a new animation and you will stop the previous one. But today we just try with one, it's already good. So um, there in the update scheduler, we can pass uh, a tuple instead of just one function. And we have the setup animations but we just call the function name without any parameter and i think that's pretty much all because that's very straightforward we don't need the cube anymore 
and instead of it we will have one 3d model with the animation that is played on it okay let's try it because it's not a resource i can't watch the update of the code so i need to compile again um but basically we'll get just uh, the character on top of the plane and we should see the animation running well amazing right uh it's quite smooth but my lighting is very bad i don't have any global illumination um in the code i have one light setup um and you have a direction directional light at a specific angle um I will try to iterate on it and uh, and find a way to get global illumination based on lighting because I think um, if we compare this animation with the one that we have on Mixamo, it appears to be not as smooth as the, the left one. Sorry, I just need to okay, center the character. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit different because of the lighting, I think. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, it's like, it's a bit laggy, right? But if we just take a look at the legs, it seems to be smooth. So, I don't know, maybe it's uh, it's because of the lighting. But, well, that's all for this game dev session. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed uh, to see how to load a 3D model into, into BV Engine, with BV Engine, and how to apply animations. Um, I think I will continue to make progress on the game especially on the lighting part and on loading different animations based on different events. And um, I will maybe not dive into the code next time, but I will certainly show you the progress. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the game, um, game dev session and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.